Howdy YouTube. I want to talk about something that we just watched a video on and elaborate a little bit more so you can get a better idea maybe of what it is in practical use. And that is the double air conditioners that are on the Rockwood RVs. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a day. So I just watched a video uh, from Anthony Yoder, uh, hey guys, uh, out at Rockwood and for their Monday Minute videos and they talked about uh, people asking about the second air conditioner being an option in their RV and how it actually works. Well I'm going to tell you that initially when we bought our 2020 Rockwood 2604 WS Ultralight, which was a 30 foot double door uh, travel trailer. Um, that we started full-time traveling in uh, that one we initially ordered it with just one air conditioner and with the consult of some friends they said it's probably best you get two well I never had two air conditioners before I never had a need for it and I'm glad that we did option in the second air conditioner of course whenever we got into now our new 2022 Rockwood uh, 2899 KS fifth wheel uh, it was a no-brainer, of course, uh, being that it was a bigger unit to go with two air conditioners for cooling. However, I want to talk about why you may want to do it even if you have a smaller unit like we did with our travel trailer. Again, the box of the, the travel trailer was about 26 foot inside and we still put two air conditioners in. So what we did is we optioned up in this one and, of course, our uh, travel trailer when we had it. Uh, we went from a 13,500 BTU air conditioner to a 15,000 BTU AC unit. What that does is allow you to have the greater capacity unit in the living area in which stuff like Heidi just got done cooking, um, you know, the heat that's generated from the oven and the stove top, uh, the heat that's generated from the, uh, you know, the TV set. There's always, if you come, you know, they're energy efficient, but if you get up close to these TVs, you can feel there's some heat coming off of them. Um, and in this case, we actually have two TVs in here. Of course, we don't run them both at the same time. But, you know, just being in this area running stuff, you know, uh, our computer and computer fans and, and uh, network storage devices with fans on them, uh, there's just heat generated. Not only that, but you want to be able to view and check out what's going on around you. So a lot of times you have the windows open. Now, we're crammed in this RV park that we're currently at. Um, this is down in uh, Kissimmee, Florida, and currently it's in the 80s, and we do like to have our windows open. Um, there's something else you may want to think about whenever you option it. Um, we have, if you look here, insulated windows. Uh, the insulated windows is nothing more than basically two panes of glass that are uh, sandwiched on there. Now, take in consideration the extra weight that you'll be adding for all that extra glass. I'm sure I have uh, about 200 pounds of extra glass alone in this unit. And uh, also, of course, whenever you're talking about the second AC unit. So that's why you would want to do a 15,000 BTU in the main unit. You know that that's not addressing the second unit yet but what is the other benefit of having a two unit uh, you know air conditioner um, on your RV well if you come up to the bedroom and ignore the mess um, we optioned in a 13,500 BTU air conditioner and again as Anthony had mentioned in his video uh, this is a um, heat strip that's also available in there, uh, a chill chaser. The nice thing about having these two units, um, like uh, he had mentioned, you have them going through the same ductwork all through the RV. So there's a tract. When they say ductwork, it's it's just like I say. There's ducting that goes all the way through. Uh, there's two rows basically, you know, and there's one in the bathroom. Uh, you can see right there. And then, of course, there's six out here. Um, what that does is allow for one air conditioner to run and cool generally this area, if it's this one in here, but it will travel through the ductwork. So 
what I do and what we do at night is we don't want to hear this air conditioner running all night long. So what we do is we'll set this on automatic mode. We'll go ahead and put it in auto and we'll set it to the temperature that we want. Now if you have an auto automatic, what it does is it turns on the fan and puts out the cold air when it drops, uh, or I should say when the temperature gets above a certain temperature, it will then turn on that air conditioner and the fan and it will be as noisy as you currently hear it right now. So what we do is uh, we put it on auto mode and we put it at a temperature that we don't want to go above in our bedroom. Then we come out and on this unit, we set it at a very low temperature. We set it down, let's say at 69 degrees. So what that does is this unit will run, it will cool this area and we also put it on fan, high fan. So even when it's done cooling, even when it gets to that temperature that is, let's say, 68, 69 degrees, at that point, it will shut off the compressor. However, the fan will continue to run and continue to circulate air through the whole RV. And the nice thing is, is whenever it's running, that cold air, you know, if, if it's 68 out here, it's trying to make it 68 in here also. Now I'm gonna say that because of the distance, you may lose some efficiency. So that's why we have the other one that may, which it never has, kick on. Uh, let's say at this temperature, we'll, we'll do like 74 degrees. So we wanna make sure that it's, if for some reason it gets really hot during the night, that if the other one can't keep this room cool enough for us, that at 74 degrees, this will kick on, cool us down to about 72, 73, and then it'll shut off again. Um, it's nice because I don't have to hear the noise of this unit. And the other thing that you can do is the exact opposite. So late at night, what we do is we set this one on automatic to shut off whenever the room reaches, let's say, 75 degrees. At 75 degrees, this one shuts off out here, and I keep this one set on like 70. So this one will be running, keeping us nice and cool, through the ductwork, all through the RV. And this one out here, if it gets above 75, it will go ahead and kick on, cool, and then you know get you to that 75 degree temperature, and then it'll shut off. And then this one usually does a pretty good job maintaining that. Um, but occasionally this one may have to kick on. I know I'm swinging you guys back and forth. So the benefits of that is when we're sitting here and watching TV or we're having a conversation or we're on the phone with somebody or I'm working on the computer, you don't have to listen to this unit running, although they're not loud. These are not loud units in comparison. Now I'll have to say that this Coleman Mach 3, we had the, both of these, we had two of these in the travel trailer and the 15,000 BTU and the 13,500 BTU that was in the travel trailer were both quieter than this 13,000 BTU one. This one here is a different design. It has a top mounted fan. It's not a motor driven fan in the same manner. So it is louder in here, but we have still definitely heard much louder units. Okay, now for the last thing and I'll let you guys go. They have what they call a dump feature. And what you can do is open that up and it will, instead of forcing the air through the ductwork, um, it will also allow it to come directly out into the room that the air conditioning is running. So right now I still have air coming out of this pretty greatly. Um, I have this one that I could also open. I still feel a considerable amount of air here because all the air that this thing's generating, the cold air that it's blowing, can't come out of just these vents. Um, it wants to come out of these vents too. But if I close these, it comes out of these vents even greater, and it is a little quieter. So that'll allow us to keep everything a little bit colder. I think it's a great idea. Um, two units, you know, two AC units up on top. Realize you're going to be running on 50 amps, though. Um, if you want to watch, go back and look at some of our earlier videos. Uh, I had the travel trailer, and I put Micro Air Easy Starts in both rooftop units to where I could run them on 30 amps if I needed to. And we actually did that in Yuma. It was 118 degrees, and we was running both rooftop air conditioners on 30 amp. So it was nice that I you know, had that set up, but in this case, um, 
if you're going to be on 50 amps, which a lot of us are, um, no sense in not getting both of them. Again, you got to realize you're putting some extra weight up there. So I hope that helps. And as always, guys, we hope to see you out here. Bye.